Hello and welcome to a Van Chat Tech Tuesday. I think it is going to be something like that anyway. Uh, where's Mandy? Everyone's asking. Um, she's currently fishing at the moment. And as this one's quite technical, she said, you know what? You can deal with all that. So this is a bit of an update, as you've discovered from the title. Uh, people keep asking, how's that working out for you? It's the upgrades we've made on the van. How are they actually working out practically after a year or months of them being in fitted and installed? So the first one people keep asking about um, is actually the fridge. Uh, the 12 volt Dometic 90 litre fridge freezer we have is a 12 volt compressor fridge freezer. It uses uh, on average uh, about four amps when it's running um, and over a day, maybe about uh, 17 amp hours. And it's absolutely fantastic through the hot summer and now the deepest winter, um, given that we're in the Arctic Circle. How is it coping with it? Well, it's brilliant actually. Unlike the three-way fridges that work on gas, electric or 12 volt, um, the 12 volt compressor fridge is actually like a domestic fridge in the way that it works. So like the three-way fridges, they work on ambient temperature. Roughly they'll give you a certain amount of cooling below the ambient temperature, whereas the compressor fridge actually keeps the temperature inside that you set just like a fridge at home. It's so worth it. It's so blinking brilliant. It's absolutely changed what we can store in the fridge. Nothing goes off anymore. Don't have any issues with it at all. So the next one on the list is how's your diesel heater be in? Well, we couldn't be where we are right now if it wasn't for the diesel heater. Now, why would you say? Well, because going through Finland where they don't have LPG, uh, going through Sweden where they don't have a lot of LPG stations has meant that we're relying on the diesel heater for our heat sometimes uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, if we're parked up and I'm editing, then the diesel heat is on because outside's like, you know, zero to five degrees thereabouts. So we need the diesel heater on all the time to stop the water from freezing and also uh, to keep other things nice and warm, like, like us mainly. So yes, the diesel heater is absolutely brilliant, still working fine and is directly plumbed into our main fuel tank now. So that means that every time we fill up, obviously the diesel heater uses that diesel. So really easy to do. And um, yeah, overall, a very cheap upgrade that has proven to be absolutely brilliant. Now another one, toilet fan. People still seem to ask about this one. Um, now, because we use pee bottles when we're wild camping, it means the toilet is used for number twos. And with the toilet fan, it means it doesn't stink out the place. Now, mainly toilets only smell when you add number ones and number twos together. More specifically, when you add female number ones to any amount of number twos. Um, so yeah, having those separate helps with smells in a toilet anyway. Uh, we don't use chemicals in our toilets because it allows us to dispose the toilet onto an, into a normal um, sort of um, sewage system or a toilet connected to that. Whereas if you use chemicals, sometimes they can't be used in things like septic tanks and stuff. So by doing it this way and by having the fan on the toilet to take out the smells outside, it means that our toilet can last, well, between one, two weeks thereabouts um, and also it means that um, yeah like I say we can dispose of number twos in the tank more easily as well so the next one is lithium batteries how are they performing for you and they are great actually absolutely game changer uh, the only thing that I keep telling everyone is make sure if you do choose lithium that you only buy it with bluetooth uh, built in something that you can directly monitor from the battery because i'm still having problems with my bmv it still doesn't really know and i've gone through all the settings with victor and everything but it still doesn't know the exact rate of charge and discharge over a period of time from the lithium and more so if you deep discharge so if we go down to like uh, 20 percent or something on the lithium the bmv then thinks that there's a lower state of charge than actually the lithium's got or sometimes it's the other way around so yeah I would highly recommend getting lithium batteries. Just make sure that you've got the right way to charge them and everything else on top. So just make sure that that's the case. Make sure that all your setup is correct. Make sure your lithium battery setup is absolutely right. I've got loads of videos on that as well. But yeah, lithium is brilliant. Now, what I was saying before about the diesel heater, keeping things warm inside the van, a lot of people say, oh, you can't use lithium in winter because you can't fast charge it or you can't even charge it. That's not true 
if you live in the van and therefore you keep in the habitation area the bit where we are now uh, to a set temperature which means that the batteries never get to the point of being too cold that you can't charge them so on average our van doesn't get below maybe eight to ten degrees uh, and that's overnight and freezing cold outside and that's what it keeps to inside so that's never a problem for us and connecting to that is b2b the b2b charger that we have is a 30 amp charger um, and every time we go for a drive or obviously start the engine if we don't want to go for a drive but we want to you know charge it up uh, that's pumping in 30 amps of power and that works just fine too like i say we travel a lawful lot we've done quite a few miles over the last few weeks um, so the b2b is helping us keep that full charge along with our solar setup and everything else like that as well but a lot of people are saying how's the b2b working out for you um, and people are saying you know does the b2b need to be told about the other charger that's on board no not at all um, it's just a state of charge that it's getting to and the b2b um, is a smart b2b so it knows the state of charge better than the van's original charger um, so the original charger just basically kind of like throttles back far too soon because it doesn't know about lithium which means the btb is far more crucial to us to get a full charge out of our lithium batteries so yeah that's they work fine in parallel with each other um, and i'm probably going to add another um, 30 amp victron b2b in as well just so i can get a faster charge now another question we get an awful lot being where we are and people haven't watched the whole history of the van and everything else is make sure that you've got the right tires with you so how are your badass bfg ko2 all-terrain tires working out for you on the van they're fantastic um obviously i've done a full review of that including us driving through the pyrenees last year through deep snow and all that kind of stuff they work fine obviously we're not going to hang around uh, the nordic area when it comes to needed studied tires and ice on the road and all that because we know the tires aren't made for that uh, we are competent that they'll work in sand mud and snow but not on ice with ice you need special special nordic kind of winter tires um, preferably even studied ones as well so yes the bfg ko2s are absolutely fantastic they've done probably about fifteen thousand miles now um, and sometime in our next couple of weeks with the travels i'm going to go into a garage where they've got a four poster um, and i'm going to get the front and rears crossed over so that the uh, the van has better wear more even wear on the tires as well another question we get is how are your rear airbags uh, working out uh, our van's got rear airbags in place of the bump stops so it allows us to have a little bit of a cushion um, obviously the rear suspension is still leaf springs um, and that helps obviously as well carrying a lot of weight on the back all the time and the airbags takes the uh, the crunch out of that sort of banging that's going on the back and they're fantastic as well um, we adjust them depending on the load of the back and also the type of terrain that we're going on that kind of stuff as well if we need more ground clearance then we can increase it a little bit not too much obviously but a little bit enough that it raises the rear up a little bit um, or if we want to level the van out a parking spot we can use them for that as well but yeah they are fantastic well 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 worth the upgrade now another one is refillable lpg bottles a lot of people are asking about that in the uk lpg is becoming more scarce up where we've been scarce isn't the word for it like I say finland doesn't even have lpg so yes refillable lpg bottles are great but just in comparison <laughs> to say like why is it worth getting them if it's more scarce if you want to go and buy a sort of like seven kilogram bottle of lpg or bottle of gas um in sweden i think ash said it worked out to be about 120 pounds to buy the bottle with the gas in and then every time you take it back and exchange it it's still about 50 or 60 pounds whereas i think we paid about when we're in norway we filled up with lpg we paid about um eight euros to get around about seven liters or something like that so yes as long as you have all these other systems in place that mean that you're not relying on LPG that much. So we've got a 12 volt fridge, that's fine. We've got the diesel heater, that's fine. So LPG really is used for cooking. And sometimes, you know, like if you want to put some hot water into the boiler system and we're not driving anywhere, so we've not got the engine power to do that, um, then we can use gas for that. Uh, but it still doesn't use an awful lot. Our usage right now is nothing 
probably like I say um, if you say seven liters was probably uh, 3,000 miles worth or a month's worth um, again it's not an awful lot really uh, and other people are asking how's the uh, three kilowatt pure sine wave inverter working out for you yep that's still absolutely brilliant that's installed underneath the driver's seat works a treat powers everything we throw at it um like say mandy's using coffee maker two or three times a morning five or six times during the day maybe and um, we have george foreman uh, grill to grill with and as you've seen we've got an induction uh, plate as well for cooking on and it powers all that no problem whatsoever uh, and the last one, not the least question we get as well, but it is just the last one, um, is our Wi-Fi setup. How are we getting on with Wi-Fi and 4G? Um, we're on an EE contract, uh, which has meant so far, every country we've been in, we've got our full EE plan, no limitation on data per month and no extra fees or anything like that. So it's been absolutely fantastic. In all fairness, we are using somewhere in the region of about 400 gig a month. Um, and that is mainly... Um, you know sort of dealing with YouTube and uploading stuff to YouTube downloading music for YouTube as well as the fact that obviously we're watching things on TV well not TV but streaming services and we're watching all our friends and other people we watch on YouTube uh, and dealing with social media on our phones so, so yes our van has a little router inside the cupboard which is permanently powered via USB so even if the van's power dies that'll still stay on it's can then connected to a little antenna on the roof um, I'll link down below a little uh, video how it's all set up and in there it has an unlimited EE sim it's set to data roaming so it works just fine where we are we can actually go into the router remotely via our phones and select different networks and that just to try and make sure we're on the fastest network wherever we are so yeah that was is working out a treat too right hope that little update has helped you all just understand our little situations and our travels and how things are working out for us and that kind of stuff so uh, there are a couple of links in the video description to look at um, links to show the products that we use um, so if you do want to look at any of those products there'll be a link down there that says something about all the products in our motorhome cleave click here um, and then there's also another couple of links in there um, if you've not already please subscribe if you want to support our channel you can click on join and become a channel supporter and obviously everything else is just up to you if you want to just click subscribe that's free if you want to hit the like button that's fantastic and making a comment and supporting our videos and sharing our videos that's great too that's enough for me then i think i might go and uh, see if mandy's caught anything out on the uh, on the lake now take care guys see you later bye